Now we want to look at the mesh current with dependent source. What if we have the dependent source in uh, our um, mesh current with uh, a dependent source? With dependent source, or with sometimes they call it the controlled source. So all we have up to this point is was the independent source, and now we want to see what if we have the uh, dependent source. Uh, how we are gonna do that? Um, uh, let's look at an example for that. So assume we have a circuit like this. So I have a battery that'll be 20 volt battery. And then we have the four ohm here. Then now assume we have a dependent source here, dependent current source here. It's going to be, um, uh, assume the current that it has is 0.25 uh, Vx. So this is the current, but it is function of the voltage. So, uh, so we have that, and then we have a resistor up here. And then have a resistance here. I have this like that. So that's going to be two ohm. <clears throat> it's going to be six ohm. And then we have. So it's going to be like that. So I assume this is what we have. I want to uh, to work with that. The things that in the previous uh, section we talked, we were talking about the current source, and but it was uh, independent current source. For example, it was two um, amp. So we know that whatever is happening is two amp. So the current was constant. No, we know that is going to be is not going to be constant. Uh, rather, it's going to be function of the V X, and the V X is the voltage in this. Um, um, I'll put it here. The voltage in this resistance. So if it, the voltage in this resistance is weak, then I assume it's going to be positive is negative. So the current in this wire is going to be function of the voltage in this uh, resistance. So want to see how we want how we can uh, work with that. So the very first step again is that we go ahead and assign the current in each of the meshes that we have. So we have the left mesh and call it you know, I1 and this the right mesh and then I2 and again I consider in both of them the current or I assume in both of them the current goes clockwise as I said it when we calculate if the I1 or I2 uh, comes at negative means that the direction I assume was wrong and it actually rotates in the opposite direction. But so we assume I1, I2, and both of them uh, uh, goes in the clockwise uh, direction. Now I want to write the equation. So again, if I want to go with the the first mesh here or the first loop here, the problem is that there is a current source in that. And there's no way that I know the voltage of that current source. So remember, this value is the is this value 0.25 Vx is the current magnitude. It's not the voltage. It's the current. The voltage I don't know. So for example, here if I'm just if the voltage in this one is V1, in this one is V2, uh, in this one is Vx. We already know, and in this one is going to be V3. So whatever voltage has that current source, I don't know what it is. And there's no way that I can find what it is. 
So I cannot write the uh, Kirchhoff voltage law in this loop. The same way I cannot write the Kirchhoff voltage law in this loop because it still is gonna involve the voltage of that current source. But I can again write uh, the um, well, Kirchhoff voltage law in the outer loop or this, uh, the super mesh. So if I start from here and go all the way up and then I rotate on the very outside of the circuit and go back to where I started. So if I, if I started from here, go all the way up, then up to this one, then in this one and go back. Still, it's a closed loop. And because it's a closed loop, I can write the uh, uh, Kirchhoff uh, voltage law. So if I write the uh, KVL at super mesh here, or the outer mesh, it's telling me the sigma V is gonna be zero. So <clears throat> if I start from here, first I have, I hit the negative sign, so it's gonna be negative, and then the magnitude is 20, and then it's gonna be plus V1, then I come here is a plus V2, then I come here is gonna be Vx, plus Vx, and then I go back to where I started, it's gonna come zero. <clears throat> and then I can go ahead and replace them with the, again, I said, the, I can say, well, V is IR, uh, the Ohm law. So I can go ahead and replace each of the voltage with this, uh, this value. So, uh, so it's gonna be negative 20, plus the V1 is gonna be I1 times two, plus here, the V2 is gonna be I2 times six, plus here is gonna be I2 uh, times two. So the I2 uh, times two, and then it's gonna come zero. So <clears throat> this is the first equation I have here, and I cannot write any other equation. Um, from the from the closed loop. So now I have to go ahead and start to look into the other way of writing the equation. One other way that I can write the equation is that again, if I look at this part from here to here, let's call it again EF. So if I go from that node up there, and then I have the Why it look like this? So if I have the dependent sources here, and then I go here. So if I start from E word F, and then I have this current, and I know the current here is 0.25 Vx. So again, I know the, and then if I put the I1 and I2, so I know that the I1 goes down. So if I rotate with the I1, the I1 goes from F toward E. The I2 goes from E toward F. So this is gonna be I2. So then I know that the I goes from E toward F. I know the I should goes from E toward F. Why I know that? Because of that arrow. That arrow tells me the current in this one goes from E toward F. So I know for sure. And the magnitude of that is 0.25 Vx. Also, I can say that I know that I in the EF, I know that the I2, I know I have the I2 and I1 in that current. So I2 goes up, I1 goes down. So it's gonna be difference of them. So it's gonna be I2 minus I1. And if I put these together, I can say the I E F is gonna be, <clears throat> uh, uh, or no, let's not look at this way. So I know that then I can say the I2 minus I1 is 0.25 Vx. So this is gonna be my first equation. 
Then I have the second equation. The problem is that I add one equation, I add one unknown. So here I have I1 and I2 in the equation. Here I have I1 and I2 and Vx. So although I add one equation, but I add one unknown as well. So still I cannot do anything because I have two equations, three unknown. So I have to go back again and try to see what other equation I can use in, in this um, uh, circuit that I have. Now if I uh, come here and look at this, uh, this particular one, so as you know, I, um, this one, so as you know, I call it M and N. So if I look at the the M and N. Let me draw the line here, so make sure it's there. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, if I look at the M and N, and then I know that the current in that one is I2. So I know the current is I2. And I know the voltage in this one is Vx. And I know the, the resistance is 2 ohm. So it's the single resistance and I can write the ohm law for that. So I know the V, V, uh, the V in that, which is gonna be the Vx uh, is equal to the I, which is gonna be I2 times the R. So let's uh, write the whole thing so you know where it is come. So the old law says the V is IR and then I substitute that. So the V is VX and the I is I2 and the R is two. Now I have this equation here as well. So now I have three equation, three unknown. And then by having these three equations, I can go ahead and start to uh, 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 work back. So uh, one easy way is that here I can come here, I, can, I have the Vx here. So I can go here and substitute the Vx with two I2. So I can go back, for example, I can use these two equations together and say I2 minus I1 is, 0.25 times Vx. How much is the Vx? Is 2i2. So is it 2i2. And then I can use these two sets of equation. So it's going to be my fourth equation. So I can use the equation one and the equation four to get i1 and i2 values and if I have done, if I write everything right, the I1 should comes out as one amp, and the I2 should comes out at two amp. So this is how we get these things uh, done. Okay, let's look at uh, another example. So it's going to be the last example we're going to have. Um, um, for mesh current and see um, what I can do there. Uh, so assume I have a circuit like that. So it's, it's more general. It almost has everything in, in, in this example. Uh, so assume I have a resistance here. There's gonna be another resistance here. And then it's going to be another resistance here. So it's going to be, and each of them are 15 ohm. Also, this is going to be 15 ohm, and it's going to be the 15 ohm as well. And then it's going to be another connected to, oops. Now there is a sense here. And then I have, <clears throat> let me 
makes it a little bit shorter. So it don't run out of space. So I know the resistance here, and then I have a current source here. Um, so it's the independent current source here. It is going to be 22 amp, and then it's going to be 6 ohm. And then it go, I have a dependent voltage sources. Then negative, positive. And then another resistance here. 8 ohm. Probably 8 ohm. And then there's another resistance go all the way up here. And it's a 10 ohm. And it's a VX. Or let's put it down there. So it's going to be so positive, negative, and it's going to be VX. So this is what we have. Uh, so this is uh, the. Uh, oh, I have. And it's going to be two VX. <coughs> So assume this is the circuit we have. I want to, to analyze this circuit. So again, probably any time that you start to analyze the circuit, uh, regardless of what method you are told to do, look at to see if you can simplify the circuit before it started. If it's, it's a node voltage or it's a mesh current or any other method you are told, I would suggest first just look at um, uh, the circuit you have, and then based on the circuit, see if you can simplify it, if you can do it, and then go to the next step and start actually doing it. Here, if I look at this circuit, I have these three uh, resistance sitting here in parallel. So I know these three are parallel to each other. So I can combine these three together. So I can come here and say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to combine these three and say that I'm going to replace these three with the uh, equivalent uh, resistance. And because they are parallel, it's going to be, uh, if you remember, if you have the parallel, it's going to be 1 over 1 over 15, 1 over R1 plus R1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Yeah. So these are so it's going to one over R one is going to one over fifteen plus one over R two is going to be one over fifteen plus one over R three is going to be one over fifteen, and then if uh, you do that, eventually you are going to get five O. So I can replace these three with one uh, resistance equal to 5 ohm. So that's what I'm going to do at the very beginning before I actually start to do anything. Um, so basically I will go ahead and say, okay, this one is equal to, and uh, so I have one 5 ohm here. So it's going to be 5 uh, ohm. So I replace these two with 5 ohm. And then I have this uh, 6 ohm here, um, and the rest is going to be the same as it was. So it's going to be 22 amp current source, and then I have this dependent voltage source. And <clears throat> Dependent voltage source, and then that eight so the eight or oh. and then the one that we have on the very top. So also this one. 
here. So it's going to be 10 all. And the positive, negative Vx. And here also we know that it's the 2Vx. So it's going to be 2Vx. So this is the voltage and the, um, the voltage in this dependent source is two times of the voltage in the top resistance here. Now that I have it like that, it's, it's simplified. And then the next step is that I will go ahead and assign the uh, current into each of them. So I, again, assume the current in the first one is the I1 in the first loop, and the clockwise. The same here is going to be I2. And then in this uh, top one is going to be uh, I3. So it's the I1, I2, and I3, and see uh, how we can work with. Now I will go ahead and write the KVL in any meshes that I can. Again, look at here. If I, uh, if I want to start writing, here in the mesh one, I cannot write anything because it, it has a voltage, uh, it has a current source in it. So I can't do anything because I don't know the voltage there. The same here, I cannot do anything with the second loop because it has a uh, voltage, it has a current source in it. And I, I don't know the voltage in that current source. So I cannot do anything also in this one. But I can write it in the third one. So I'm gonna just, um, first, and first I assume it's gonna be V1 here, it's gonna be V2 here, it's gonna be V3 here. And in this one is V4. And again, there's no way that we know how much of the V4. And here at the top is the Vx, we already know that. So if I write the KVL for the very top node, that's, that's the only node at the moment I can write it. So I can go ahead and write the KVL at loop three or mesh three. Then it's gonna tell me the sigma V is zero, therefore, if I start again from this point here, go all the way up there, come back. So I can go here and it's going to come out as a VX. Then I hit the battery and I hit the plus sign first, so it's going to plus and the magnitude is going to be two VX. And then I hit the, here is the V2 and it's going to be zero. And then if I use the uh, V is equal to IR, to replace the V2, so I'm gonna have the Vx plus two Vx plus, uh, <clears throat> if I go this direction, when I get to the V2, for the V2, I have the I3, does the, and for the E2, what I have is that the I3 goes this direction, uh, and the I1 goes this direction. So it's the I3 minus I1, or inside minus outside, minus I1, and then times six, and then it comes zero, and it becomes my first equation. So after I, I, I do that in the very first, in the, in the first equation, so now I have uh, this equation here. Now I want to go to, uh, still um, uh, I have to find a way that to get the I2, uh, into my equation. So I have I1, I2, Vx, and still I don't have even, I don't have I2 in my equations. So the next one I'm gonna choose is that, so I choose the top no, top mesh or top loop. I cannot use this one. I cannot use this one, but I can use this super mesh here. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use this super mesh here that this, um, not much space that I can show it, so I just show it with some dash line. So I go from this line here, 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 go back down here, here, go back here, go back to where I started. So I can use this super mesh here as, as um, to write the KVO. So if I go ahead and write the KVO, that's super mesh. Again, it gives me the sigma V is zero. And then I started from 
I can start from down here or top here, doesn't matter. So let's start from top here. So from this node, if I go, then I have the V2. Then here, if I keep going in this direction, it's gonna be negative because I hit the negative sign first. So it's gonna be negative, then the two X. And then if I keep going, I hit the width three. And then I come back here, I hit the V1. And um, go um, at, the, at the point I started, so it's gonna be zero. If I add all of them. Again, if I write the own lot to replace any of them that I can replace, so the, for the V2, again, it's gonna be I1 or into inside current minus outside current or the I1 minus I3. I1 minus I3 times six for the V2, then minus two Vx, then plus for the V3 is gonna be eight and you have only I2, so it's gonna be I2 times eight. And then if I come back here for the V1, I have only I1 in that, so it's gonna be plus uh, I1 times five, and it's gonna come zero. So it's gonna be the second equation. So it's the first equation, second equation, I have I1, I2, I3, and V. So I have two equation, four unknown. So I have to go ahead and it's, again, it's, uh, it's, uh, keep looking uh, other equation that I can use. One other equation I can use, come here and again, look at these two, these two nodes here. And again, if I look at it at the E and F, and if I write the E and F here, so um, I know the current in that one. So I can <coughs> uh, go ahead and say, this is a E, F. I know the current is, this one is uh, uh, 22 amp. Also, I know the current in this one is, I have the I1 goes down and I have the I2 goes up. And the same, as I says here, so the, I know the IEF is 22 amp because I have the source that push it there, 22 amp. Also, I know that the IEF is the difference of the I2 minus I1, so the I2 minus I1. So I can say that I2 minus I1 is 22. So it's gonna be my third equation. So I have one equation, two equations, three equations. So I have three equations, but still I have uh, four unknown. So I need another equation. Get the fourth equation. What I can do is that I go, I can go ahead and look at the, the this very, uh, top, uh, I would say, resistance here, what I have here. So if I assume again, I'll come here and say, it's gonna be all here M, all here N, and I draw that M N, so I have this one. There's the M, it's the N, I know it's the plus the minus, so it's a Vx and the 10 ohm. And I know the current in that one is I3 and it goes that direction. So it's the I3. So by knowing that I can write the ohm law again, V is IR. Therefore the V I know is the Vx and the I is I3 and the R is 10 ohm. It's gonna be my fourth equation. So I have one, two, three, four equation. And I can use these four equations, solve them together. And then uh, it, it gives me the, uh, uh, so if I go ahead and use the equation one, <clears throat> equation one, three, four together, 
uh, and if I have right uh, all the things right, so I'm going to get the I1 should come out as um, negative 12 amp. I2 should come out as 10 amp. I3 should negative 2 amp. And V <coughs> Vx is going to be uh, negative 20 volts. So this negative sign means that the direction I chose here, for example, for I1, it means that the actual the I1 goes the counterclockwise. Or the negative sign for I3, it means that the I3 actually goes the counterclockwise. And the negative 20 for Vx is actually means that this polarities should be the opposite. So it should be negative here at the left and should be positive here uh, on the right side. Um, but when you are doing it, you don't need to be worried to just solve it. And if it comes negative, if it comes out negative, it comes out negative. So don't worry about it. 